Thank you for this invitation to the Solutions from Below panel. So, Mexico City has abandoned the water under natural conditions, but human mismanagement has caused artificial scarcity of this element. 500 years ago, the city was this. Once dubbed by Spanish chronicles, the Venice of the New World. Today is home to 21.8 million inhabitants and looks like this. So, the entire lake was desiccated. The 13 rivers that irrigate the basin was, have been toothed to remove sewage waste. Sewage outflow, landfills, and gas station pollutions pollute the city's aquifer. Millions of cubic meters of clean rainwater are annually lost in the sewage. 70% of population reports water shortages, yet rainy season lasts seven months a year. So there are constant floods during rainy season. 50% of waters in the basin are heavily polluted. 40% tube water is lost in pipe leakage. 20% of household income is spent in bottled water. So I will give you an example of a solution from below that I have been working recently with an interdisciplinary team at the Berlin Studios Mac. Through the Urban Exchange Research Project sponsored by the Alfred Herrhausen Heschelstab, we came in contact with the community of Miravalle in Mexico City. Miravalle is located in the far east end of the city at the foothill of the Guadalupe volcano. The community has access to the city centralized water network only once a week. People store water for house use in buckets and cisterns and buy potable water from tank trucks because commercial water is too expensive. They do not have a culture of recycling and harvesting, no infiltration infrastructure. Despite the community's proximity to, Guadalupe, to the Guadalupe volcano, the people had completely turned their back on the natural world. So our first step was to design a site action inviting the local people to take a walk up to the volcano hill. The, the walk was a social breakthrough. For the first time, they look at Miravalle from the volcano's perspective. The irony of this fact could not be any greater, considering Miravalle literally means in Spanish, look at the valley. After site actions, such as this, architectural interventions in community are more effective. Change be begins with a positive shift of perception. Together with the community, we observed there was an underused dome covering a public area around, already surrounded by a public dining hall, a health center, and a library. Through low-cost interventions, we recycled the dome as a rainwater harvesting structure supplying potable water to the community's dining hall that invites the general public to pump drinkable water out to an open source by pedaling on a fixed bicycle. The social impact of the intervention could be summed up as follows. It decentralized water supply. It sets a cultural precedent for sustainable water use. It is a pedagogical infrastructural tool operated by the community which could detonate the integration of water recycling into private homes and other public spaces. It is a visible public element that symbolically represents Mira, Miravalle's autonomous, sustainable solutions, self-management, and awareness. It counteracts the general feeling that water is a lacking resource that gets to homes. Instead, of the dome gives back to the people active responsibility and control over the local management of this resource. As designers and architects, we are careful not to impose solutions we design with the community and not for it. This makes people receptive to new ideas. However, there are some issues we have encountered in this process, which, to conclude, I would like to open for discussion here today. We have found it very hard to get across to people the idea that design matters, that it is not superfluous, but part of a strategic outlook, valuable in restoring life, quality, and public space dignity, and this happens regardless of funding be top-down or bottom-up. So first question, how do we communicate and convey the necessity of beauty as a tool in the production of contemporary cities? As and like artist Theaster Gates has said, is that beauty is not a luxury but a basic service. And second and final, we found out that working with community requires an author shift to design authorship 
architects work towards integrating form and function, but often the building process done by the actual community preserves only the most basic aspects of their vision. This directly affects the show and tell economic pattern of authorship in architecture. Achievements are hard to show. So second and final question, how can we reimagine re re authorship in architecture when working with community? Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Roxana. I suggest we stick with these two presentations for a moment and think uh, about those uh, collectively. And I want to follow up with this question about, uh, clearly you're ticking many of the boxes which we have highlighted at this conference around experimentation, design, engagement. In your mind, how do you deal with this idea of scalability? So this is one very specific example. As a designer, do you, are you inventing a model which you see being rolled out? And I think, Julia, it's the same for you. Are you inventing something in very specific context which you would like to see being replicated? And if so, at what scale and in which context? Well, I, I think, first of all, that yes, of course, you want to replicate these things. As I said, like, we would like that this dome could be the idea of harvesting water and making potable and that they can be more sustainable that we would like to replicate it into private homes and other public spaces, of course. And I think that you start replicating it with very simple ideas, very simple um, and very small um, elements, you know, like very experimental and local. And then maybe when you replicate it and it begins to grow, then it starts changing and then, then you can transform the city with that. But you start with very small tactical interventions and then they will become mm -hmm. bigger. Julia, what's your response? Yeah, it's the, it is the perennial sort of acupuncture urbanism question of the sort of scalability. And I would say my first reaction to that is, of course, there is rollout. And I think um, you, uh, the sort of my, my, my sort of thinking about that is that that's about the stakeholders that you engage with. And that rather than hi hiding away from government or sort of um, sort of bureaucratic processes that are often found in these kind of spaces that you need to engage with them. And in this case, the, you know, the municipality was heavily involved in the project. They actually had to sign it off and they were involved in some of the sort of funding aspects of it. And I've been to conferences in Delhi where, they're present, where they present the project as if it's their own. I'm fine with that. However, the second thing, comment is I don't think that it's necessarily about taking my drawings and replicating and building septic tanks throughout India. Um, I think it's about developing a more effective taxonomy to react to the problem and that there isn't sort of one solution that's just going to get boshed out. Um, and it's about replicating the process as opposed to the product. I think Rahul perhaps said that more eloquently than, than I just did this morning. So, Joe, can I invite you to maybe respond? Here's a generation of young, dynamic, uh, enthusiastic architects. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, I wasn't going there. Uh, I was suggesting the wise advice of someone who has done this for many, many decades. I, I mean, I, I think I'm, I, I'm, I'm interested... Could you speak closer to the microphone, please? Is that a bit better? Okay. I, I'm, I'm interested from the point of view that we seem to take upon our shoulders a huge amount of weight. Um, I mean, I've, I've heard today, for example, architects talking about transforming the world about dealing with global issues of migration. And now we get to this wonderful opportunity to talk about small, little experiments that can just move knowledge a little bit forward, but to be followed by many others. And then we slip into the same old problem of replicability. How can we translate it into a European experience? How can we save the world of water? Let's keep it small. Let's keep it experimental. And let's not have any higher aspiration than just making it once and seeing how it works. And leave it at that. And we need many more architects to make many more experiments all over the place. And maybe we can start moving forward with some kind of confidence. That's my view. Wonderful. That's an applause. Is, is there anyone else around the panel who wants to react to, I think, a very sort of nice uh, moment? Amika, I think you do. Um, so we also work on a really small scale, and it's also a question that we're posed 
really regularly how, how you replicate it or how you build a model from it that's applicable elsewhere. Um, and I think the question as it's emerging for us is very similar to the way it's emerging for you, which is not what's this design methodology that you can roll out elsewhere, um, but what were the conditions that enabled us to work in that way? So what's the infrastructure that you need at a city level, whether that's administrative, financial, to do with human resources, that enables um, maybe a city administration to work directly with the local community without these exceptional kinds of interventions um, from architects or from you know, exceptional kinds of funding?